In this video, we're going to be doing a quick recap of the Ironman 70.3 Crouch Gal at the weekend and my thoughts and how the race went. So I had two days left in Europe that I could use and I decided to go and do the race in Germany as I'd been feeling quite good in training probably for the last sort of 10 days. So a week post Ibiza, started to feel quite good in training, felt like I'd kind of just got into a nice rhythm again. Do you know what? Let's go and race. Last year I didn't get to race much so I just wanted the opportunity to go and race. Really just felt like I could have a good one. There was already in my training plan the idea to have a bit of a kind of race simulation test day on the Sunday anyway. So I asked Dan if I get the opportunity to go and race. I'm going to use those last two days. Can I just do the testing in a race rather than at home? And he agreed, you know what? why not I'll probably be able to get a bit more out of myself in a natural race environment than at home so we decided to go for it So I guess even on race week, we were going, then we weren't going, then we were going again. We were actually waiting on an official document that was gonna allow me to travel. So initially I thought I'd be able to travel maybe on the Thursday. However, we couldn't get hold of this official document. So I'd actually told Ironman I wasn't gonna be racing. And then later in the day, we decided, you know what? we could just use the two days that we have. So I went back to Ironman and said, actually, you know what? I'm gonna race. I'm just gonna use those last two days that I've got and, and make it happen. So obviously a lot of people didn't know I was coming. I didn't even really know I was coming until last minute. We actually changed our flights to Friday based on some information that we've been given. However, that information was then proven not to be true. So we had to change our flights back to Saturday. So there was a lot of communication going on back and forth with Ironman. So I just feel really fortunate that one, they was willing to let me come on really late notice so thanks so much to them for allowing me to do that but it was quite fun to do it last minute you know what there's no pressure i'm going to the race because i feel good we're going to use it as a training day it already was a really good field so i knew i was going to get tested against some of the best athletes i just am someone who does love to race so it was nice to just think you know what i'm going to go in i'm going to race and then i'm going to be coming straight home so i think it was a nice surprise to my fans they were really excited that i made it and i think you know what actually most of the girls are really similar to me they want to race the best athletes so I think most of them were pretty happy that I did turn up to come and race. definitely wasn't more nerve-wracking. I don't really feel like I had time to even be nervous. It had been quite stressful, obviously, traveling last minute. It meant that I didn't get to cycle the course, and it's a fairly technical course in Kreitschgau. It reminded me a lot of at home, actually, though, so I did really enjoy the course, and sometimes I actually like to go and race on a course that I don't know. It feels a little bit more fun and exciting. So, yeah, I wouldn't say I was more nervous. It kind of just felt like a whirlwind, like we arrived, and 
oh my God, I'm racing tomorrow. And then, oh my God, I need to pack up because we're going home. So a very different experience. I think now when I arrive to races weeks before or even days before, I'm going to feel like I've got so much time. So that's a nice thing to kind of take forward into my next racing anyway. <laughs> So I guess if we start from the beginning, the swim felt really good. The water was colder than I expected. So I did get in and just acclimatize in the morning beforehand just to get used to that. And actually once I got swimming in the race, it didn't feel cold at all. It felt quite nice. Did my usual thing on the swim. Actually felt like it was quite easy to sight despite the lake being called hard to see, which I thought it was gonna be hard to see where I was going. <laughs> Um, no, that's a that's a really bad joke. Sorry about that. Yeah, so it was really easy to sight. There was actually a lead kayaker that was leading the way around the lake. So although I hadn't swam the course before, it was quite easy to sight where I was going. Into transition one, it was quite a long run out to the bike, but I'd walked through that the day before, so I knew how that layout worked. Got onto the bike and then felt pretty good. Kind of just settled into my own rhythm. And then quite early on, I actually hit quite a big pothole, which unfortunately just threw my drive chain out a little bit. It, so it wasn't shifting very well it wouldn't sit in the right gear and then unfortunately my tri bar started to come a bit loose so that got progressively worse as the ride went on until I got to the point where I was like, you know what, I've actually got to stop and try and tighten this up. And luckily I was carrying the right Allen key so I could stop, quickly tighten those bolts up, but I couldn't fix the issue with the drive chain. So I just had to get back on and keep riding. So that was a little bit frustrating. It meant that I actually slipped back into about seventh place off the bike, which is a different position for me to be in. But obviously given the time frame that we had only arrived the day before, we'd made it work. I was like, you know what, I, I want to finish this race. I want to just see if I can put the whole day together. So I got on the run and I actually felt really good, really strong, just settled into my rhythm, was catching each woman one at a time and felt like I was in a good position. And then it ended up being a really exciting race that is a different way of racing that I've never done before. So super happy to manage to just catch Ellie Salt House right at the end of the run. I think it was about 18 kilometers into the run. I caught Ellie and she, stayed really strong. She was hanging in just behind me the whole way to the end. And I could just see Laura ahead. I could just see her through the crowds of age group athletes racing and just couldn't quite get her at the end there. So it made it a super exciting race and definitely was worthwhile doing, coming away with second, but just feeling like actually the day didn't pan out perfectly, but I kept going and ended up having a good result at the end, regardless of the dramas and issues that I had on the bike. Let's get ready to celebrate her. My main kind of goals for this race was to test some different nutrition strategies that I hadn't really tested in training before. And other than that, it was just that I'd felt pretty good in training. So I just wanted to go and see how that would show up in a race and whether I would learn anything new. I think you can learn a lot from training, but you always will learn more from going and racing and actually putting yourself out there against the other women and definitely had some good takeaways from the race. So it was 100% worth doing. When things don't go to plan, which often in long distance racing, things will go wrong. You're racing for quite a long time. So there's a lot of time for things to not go quite right. And I have experienced this before in races, but I think this was probably one of the worst things that's happened to me in the race. And it's just about keeping a level head. I knew that 
I had the right equipment with me to fix the tri bar issue. It was just thinking actually when is the right time and is this bad enough to fix? And it kind of got to the point where I was like, actually this isn't safe to ride like this anymore. So I'm gonna have to quickly stop and sort this out. I knew that the whole time I was still in the top 10 in the race, I'm still in a great position. So I feel like you've got to keep going in that position. And actually what's the point in stopping in the middle of the bike course? I might as well get to the end of the bike and at least start the run and see how it feels. And because I started the run and actually felt good, I was like, well, let's just keep going then. Like, and I was enjoying it. And I think that's the main thing. Like I am someone who does enjoy racing. So you know what? Sometimes you just have to take the pressure off yourself and think actually it's not about the position. It's just about having a good day out there. And I think that was the thing. I was having fun and enjoying it and it didn't really matter what had gone wrong, I was just going to keep going all the way to the end. You know what, I'm super happy to come away with second. It, it never really was about the position in this race, it was about testing a new nutrition strategy, seeing how much energy I would have later in the race, just see how the body would feel throughout the day to be honest. It is quite hard to take knowing that actually if I hadn't had issues I would have been more in the mix and maybe I could have got the win but ifs and buts you know what anything can happen and I'm just happy that I kind of kept super headstrong and managed to come away on the podium with a good result. Super happy for Laura to defend her title and really chuffed for Ellie to see her back at her best I think like really fighting for the win all the way and I know she had an epic battle with Laura pretty much all day so I just love women's racing right now it's just so so good I feel like our racing is more exciting than the men's okay I'm a little bit biased but yeah the women's racing is just on fire at the moment so I'm just super happy to be part of it now we're gonna head back to our last video where I asked you how long did I sit in the ice bath post the race in Ibiza for our competition I've ever, ever had in here. The amount of time I spent in the ice bath was five minutes, eight seconds, point five nine. In future, <laughs> I will reveal who has won based on the comments in the last video. So we will put the comment up here of who was the closest guest and we will be in touch to send you my signed transition number from the PTO race in Ibiza. Okay, I'd just like to say a massive, massive thank you to Rico Hoffman and Nina Ludwig who supplied us with footage from the race. We will link their profiles below, so go and check them out. As well as loads of you who gave us photos and footage that you've got of me during the race. Obviously, it was a super hectic turnaround for us, so we didn't take Holly to get the footage from this race. So a huge thank you to those for supplying that. And a massive thank you to all of you who are supporting me and cheering out on the course. It just makes such a difference and makes the day so much more fun when you're suffering and really pushing yourself to the limit out there okay as always thanks for watching this video make sure to like and subscribe and hopefully we'll be back with a super cool video very soon Bye.